The manner in which we both receive in our hearts and share with the world the life which Christ offers to us is not only the theme of the 19th All-American Council, but should be a guiding principle for us as we look to the future. How do we, collectively as the Orthodox Church in America and locally in our diocese, contribute to the apostolic work of bringing life to the world? In the Archdiocese of Washington, we have already begun taking action in all areas of the four pillars. Although our diocese is the smallest in geographic size, our ten parishes and missions are striving to fulfill our apostolic ministry through our attention to the spiritual life, stewardship, relations with others, and outreach and evangelism. If we use a tree as the image of a local community, then the roots of that tree are the spiritual life, by which we receive the healthy nutrients for growth through prayer and participation in the Holy Mysteries. The trunk represents our common stewardship of the gifts within that community. The branches stand for our witness and ministry in the world around us, and the leaves, flowers, and fruit represent our mission of outreach and evangelism. Essential for the development of the tree are the roots, that is, the cultivation of the spiritual life, which includes our liturgical and sacramental life, theological education, vocations, the health of our clergy and their families, as well as the development of monasticism. In our archdiocese, we are blessed with both established parishes and growing missions that are deeply planted in this spiritual earth. We completed the last phase of our iconography project in March of this year, and we feel that it is uh, an absolutely beautiful complementary uh, addition to the church itself and our worship experience here. Many people who come and visit truly believe that it is some of the best iconography in the area. The vision that we had, our committee and myself, was to tell the story of salvation. And that's what we began with in the sanctuary in the apse. We have, of course, the Annunciation, um, Nativity, we have Christ's crucifixion, the descent into Hades, the ascension into heaven, all of those essential components theologically for our faith. Uh, then in this next phase, we've added feast days and parables. So we have beautiful illustrations, I believe, of parables of the prodigal son, the Good Samaritan, uh, many healing instances. Of course, we had to have the healing at the Sheep Gate Pool in Bethesda because we're in Bethesda. Um, and uh, raising of Lazarus, Palm Sunday, uh, Pentecost. As you can see, come visit, you see all of these. And it's great to preach here because now I can just point. If our task is to help bring the life of Christ into the world, then our parishes need to convey that vitality, and this can only happen if our clergy are well prepared for their pastoral ministries. Every available resource needs to be provided to the clergy and their families so that they might both maintain their own spiritual and physical health and provide inspiration to the faithful so that together they can firmly stand as a trunk of the church in their community through a genuine Christian life. We have had several individuals answer the call to ordain service, and we humbly try to support their vocations, whether it be through attendance at one of our seminaries or participation in the diaconal vocations program. In addition to seminarians, we also have raised up one monastic vocation. I came to seminary because I wanted to learn the Orthodox framework for ministry. Um, I was a, a public school teacher and I knew that I wanted to help people, I wanted to minister to people, but I didn't have the tools that the Orthodox Church offers. And I, I'm learning here at seminary both the framework for Orthodox ministry and also just deepening my faith, deepening my knowledge of the faith that I was brought up in. And I found that I actually have a lot of holes, that there's a lot of places where I've learned quite a bit about the history of the church, the scriptures, 
and the patristic tradition of the Orthodox Church. Some of the things we've been doing include um, CPE, so that's training to be a chaplain. There's also just the uh, pastoral formation that St. Tikhon's offers. And so whatever the diocese needs, whatever the Orthodox Church in America needs, I'll be qualified in several ways to serve those needs, especially for education, youth leadership, and the various other organizations that are endorsed by the Canonical Assembly of Orthodox Bishops in North America. I was ordained to the diaconate a little over a year ago. It's really the fulfillment of a boyhood dream to serve Christ's church in this formal position. It's really been fulfilling to form that visual bridge between the people and the sanctuary and what's going on in our liturgies and our um, services. It's been even more gratifying to see my family blossom amidst the normal demands of parish life. We're all a bridge between the various parts of the church, connecting the parts of the body. And it's been a fulfillment of that boyhood dream to experience the excitement of my family helping me serve Christ's church here. What brings us to the monastery is inexplainable. It's something deeply personal in that it's something that happens. It's a change that happens within the very depths, within the most secret place of our being. It's a calling. It's divine grace. And we respond to that call. And so for me, that's why I came to the monastery. <laughs> so what's really vital for the life of the church is for all of its members, in whichever way they are called, to struggle to live out their life in Christ, whether it be in a monastery or in married life or in any other way in which they have been informed to live. An often neglected component of clergy health is the wives of our clergy, who share in both the burdens and blessings of their husband's ministry. This year, I hosted a gathering of clergy wives which had no fixed agenda other than to provide an opportunity for the wives to share with each other and for us to explore ways to address issues such as isolation and stress. When the roots and the trunk are healthy, then the branches of the local church extend into the wider community and give forth the leaves of good relations with others and also bear fruit, flowers, and seed to nourish and perfume those who are spiritually hungry and dying. We have three existing missions, one of which, Christ the Savior in Berlin, Maryland, has graduated to full parish status, and we're very excited about that. And two are successfully going through the various phases of mission development, Holy Archangels in Annapolis, Maryland, and All Saints of North America in Alexandria, Virginia. In addition, we are now planting the next generation of missions. We have a newly invigorated mission board. They've sponsored a retreat on mission and small parish growth. And importantly, have done a study of the surrounding geographical area to look at where the, all the Orthodox churches are, various jurisdictions, to look for the gaps in coverage, to look at the demographics and associated traffic patterns, and have found three very promising sites for establishing new missions. And in 2018, we are expecting to develop a new mission station. The theme of this year's All-American Council is For the Life of the World. Though our archdiocese is small, we have accomplished much by the grace of God. Thanks to the prayers and support of our clergy and faithful, we are prepared to continue bringing, humbly yet with boldness, the life and light of Christ to a broken and suffering world so that all of mankind might hear the news and partake of the reality of the resurrection and eternal life. <laughs>